Hi friends, uh, welcome to my channel. Let's have a look at problem 2361, minimum costs using the train line. So in this problem, we are uh, we required to return a one indexed array called costs of length n, where costs i is the minimum cost to reach stop i from stop zero. So a stop can be counted as reached from either the expressed line or the regular line. So, but you know, in the assumption of this problem, so if we switch from the regular line to the express line, there will be a, an extra cost given by the extra cost variable. But if we switch from the express line to the regular line, there's no cost. So that's the main statement of the problem. So here are two examples, so you can review, and the constraints. The constraints is mainly about the range of the numbers and the length of the stops. So the length of the stop can be up to 10 to the power 5, which is a decent large number. So in this video, we're going to share a solution based on dynamic programming. The procedure is as follows. So to make the logic clearly exposed, we here use two DP tables. So for sure, this can be improved. So dp1i will be the minimum cost to reach regular stop i plus 1. And dp2i is the minimal cost to reach express stop i plus 1. So here, plus 1 because the 1 indexed assumption in the problem. So for each step uh, stop, we're going to return the mean of dp1i and dp2i, right? This will uh, build up the final uh, return. So the DP update rule is the following. So first, to reach a regular stop, there are two ways. Uh, via regular stop i minus 1, or switch from express stop i minus 1. The secondly is that to reach the, an express stop i, there are also two ways. Either via express stop i minus 1, or switch from regular stop i minus 1 with extra cost. So that's the DP update rule. So with that said, actually, let's um, do the code directly. So in this problem, we feel that the code itself uh, speaks. So we're going to split this into three steps. First is initialization. So we're going to track the length of the stops that is regular, or we can use express the same. Then we're going to initialize dp1, dp2, the two tables, that is a uh, length n array for each. Uh, for secondly, we are going to first set dp1 or dp2 0. So this is actually just for convenience. So we can write this in the third step uh, for loop, but let's do it separately so that we make the logic more clear, more clear. So um, first, dp1 zero. So there are two ways. So we can uh, directly use the regular root. So that is regular zero. Or we can uh, switch from the express line. That is, uh, we can first uh, go to the express line using express cost, then plus regular zero. So in this case, definitely this uh, this one is smaller, but let's keep this format. dp2 zero, actually there, are, there is only one way. So we go to this line and uh, we use this cost express zero, right? So this is for the first stop. Then for the uh, generic stop, greater than one, so each uh, stop has to, uh, has two ways to reach. So for third step, so dp update and iterate iteration. So this is the for loop for i in range one to n. Then we're going to update dp one and dp two. So first dp one i. So how can we arrive at stop i plus one? The regular stop. So there are two ways. First, via regular stop i minus one, uh, corresponding to stop i, then plus 
a regular i. So this is the one way. Or we switch from the express line and then plus the current cost. So this is for uh, the regular route. And for the express route, there are also two ways. First is we use the express line uh, in stop um, i and then plus the express i. Or we switch from the regular line. So that is dpi2 dp1 i minus 1 plus the switch cost express cost then plus express i. Right. And then we can append the corresponding result to the result variable that is dp1 i dp2 i the minimal of these two so if we compare the format of dp1 and dp2 if we compare the right side of the two uh, equalities so we notice that the form is the same except that in dp2 so we have this extra term express cost because if we switch from the regular route to the express route there is a cost and if we switch from the express root to the regular root, there is no cost. So that's it for this step. Now we are ready to return the result. So let's do a uh, special case check first. Result. So we haven't, uh, let's see. Uh, result. That's it's minimum of dp1 0, dp2 0. So let's stop this result variable. Let's see. So let's do this. Yeah, it passes a special case. Now let's look at the generic case. Yeah, it passes the generic case. So it would say that this problem is a standard uh, practice for dynamic programming. Uh, this is the format of solution. So you can um, devise other formats based on this format or one direction is that we can for sure uh, simplify the format of the solution. So with that said, I guess that's the end of this video. Thank you so much.